Welcome everybody. We hope you enjoyed reading about forecasting. We started last session. I had a chance to read a book, Elvin Toffler's book, A Future Shock, written some 40 years back in 1970s. The book is based on the enormous qualitative analysis about the way the future progress is going to change our lives. The prediction based on the qualitative analysis Interviews, focus group discussions, research reports, and the newspaper articles seem to be very close to reality during the last two, three decades. I'm pleased to welcome our expert, Dr. Muhammad Abbas Chaudhary, for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let us get to work. In the last session, we discussed forecasting at the Walt Disney World. Forecasting is very important and help us predict human resources requirement, capacity requirements, and demand predictions, supply chain management. Forecasting system involves seven steps. We discuss forecasting time horizons, types of forecasts, and qualitative forecasting methods, including jury of expert, Delphi method, and Salesforce composite. Ladies and gentlemen, our agenda for today's session is quantitative methods of forecasting, time series forecasting, decomposition of a time series, naive approach, moving averages, exponential smoothing, exponential smoothing with trend adjustment, trend projections, seasonal variations in data, cyclical variations in data. Now I will request our expert to advance our understanding on these topics. Sir. Well, thank you, Aisha. Uh, your mention of Alvin Toffler uh, took me some uh, 20 years back, uh, rather more than 20 years. In 1990s, uh, I think it was 1990 or 1991, that was when I was first introduced uh, to Alvin Toffler. In fact, our, uh, in our marketing of technology course, Professor Shane uh, urged us very strongly, ladies and gentlemen, to read Future Shock. And I read it then and many times thereafter during the last two decades. It's absolutely fascinating book. And I think uh, Alvin Toffler has become a legend. It is not the future shock. Subsequently, he wrote uh, The Third Wave, and then War and Anti-War. Then he uh, very lately, I think, he wrote uh, with his uh, wife, Harry Toffler, The Revolutionary Wealth. Absolutely fantastic reading. I'll very strongly urge you, these books are classic, as fresh as they can be, as ever. I think uh, uh, that reminds me the, uh, the, the quote of, one of the quote of Alvin Toffler, he, who says, that the illiterates of 21st century are not those who cannot read or write. The illiterate of this century are who cannot learn, unlearn, and then relearn. Well, that's interesting which is actually the manifestation of the change and the speed of, with which this change is happening. And I think that creates enormous complexity for the forecasters as well. Aisha, you will recall, if the speed of change is what you really can manage with, you have to be very uh, accurate, very precise, very candid, and very calculated when you make a forecast, when you make a prediction based on which then you are going to make operations and productions and management decisions. And uh, now we'll be uh, actually 
getting into the quantitative uh, forecasting methods which are used as we mentioned earlier when you have stable and historical data about existing products, existing services, current technology and it involves mathematical techniques. Then there are a number of uh, quantitative approaches. Uh, some are time series based, others are uh, basically relationship of variables. The time series models include naive approach, moving average approach, exponential smoothing and trend projections. All these are categorized as time series models. Whereas linear regression is considered as associative models. We'll be discussing all these in some details. Uh, time series basically uh, is based on set of evenly spaced numerical data obtained from observing response variable at regular time intervals. These time intervals could be hour, could be a day, could be uh, let's say a week or a month or a year. The, 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 uh, at regular evenly spaced in intervals we obtain the data. data. Then fair, fair forecast based only on the past values, no other variables are important when we are talking of time series models. Assumes that factors influencing past and present will continue to influence the future. Now, uh, it is important to understand there are a number of components of uh, time series and these components are trend, then uh, cyclical nature of the uh, happening, then seasonal nature of the happening or randomness of the happening. These are all components that deal with time. Is over a period of time there is a trend? M means positive trend, no trend, negative trend or is this a cyclical trend? Evenly spaced cycles or is there a seasonal trend? In summer go up, winter go down, summer go up, winter go down or is there, there is no uh, there is a randomness, May, means data is randomly uh, placed and you cannot, it is neither trend nor cyclical nor seasonal. Means these are the components of the time series data. And uh, when let's say in, 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 in component of demand, actually all these four can be present. One could be present two could be present, three could be present, or all four could be present, uh, let's say if we are uh, measuring a demand. Uh, this, this curve shows, let's say, uh, 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 a demand of certain product or services. When we see here, 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 these are the seasonal components or seasonal peaks, right? right. Then if we draw the trend line, it is a positive trend. Right? Right. Uh, it means this curve describes the actual demand. This curve describes the trend. Right? And then uh, average, if you calculate every demand over four years, this is year one, two, three, four, and this is demand projection uh, uh, product or service. This is the average demand over a period of four years. And during these peaks, there is a randomness. You see here randomness? You see randomness here? Okay. It means your, 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 your demand curve can be explained why these, these, these peaks are certain seasonal peaks, trend is positive, every demand is here, and actual demand also has a random component. Now, uh, let's look at the trend component. Trend component persistent overall upward or downward pattern. As I mentioned in the previous diagram, it was a positive trend. It can be otherwise negative trend. There can be no trend, right? We'll be discussing the data. Changes due to population, technology, age, culture, and so on. I mean, certain trend is there. Typically, several years duration. Trend is generally, you cannot have a trend over a period of day, or maybe in certain cases you can have, but generally, trend is over a longer period of time. Typically, several years. As far as the seasonal component is concerned, it is a regular pattern of up and down fluctuations uh, and due to weather, due to custom. For example, if there is a, let's say, a Eid season or Diwali season for Hindus or Christmas season for Christians, I mean, sales go up. 
Similarly, a visit to the parks during the holiday season, visit to the parks will increase. In summer season, uh, you will require, uh, let's say, uh, uh, ice cream and cold products uh, will be more in demand. Similarly, in winter season, uh, you'll have hot uh, uh, beverages more in demand. The seasonal. And season can be week, length is day, number of seasons is seven. In a month, four weeks, number of seasons will be four. In a month, 28 to 31 days, and there will be 28 to 31 seasons. In a quarter, uh, in a year, four quarters, in a year, 12 months, or in a year, 52 weeks. These um, means in certain week, let's say Christmas week can be a season. Eid week can be a season. Holiday week or holiday season could be there. And generally, uh, uh, the, while you are forecasting, you have to be, you have to be careful if there is a seasonal variation in demand or in forecasting. Then there is a cyclical component. In cyclical component, you see evenly spaced cycles are repeated up, down, up, down. Repeating the movements affected by business cycle, political and economic factors. Multiples, generally, this is again, cyclical variation is generally over a period of a longer duration, often casual or associated relationship, right? We'll be discussing associative relationship in greater details. Then in the random component, erratic, unsystematic residual fluctuation. That means you cannot predict what is happening, up, down, up, down, sometime much below, sometime much higher, due to random variation or unforeseen event. You cannot explain why this randomness is happening. Short duration and generally non-repeating. I mean, you see each I uh, means there is no pattern as far as this curve is concerned. Right. Sir, uh, I think we understand the various components of time series forecast. We would like to know uh, the quantitative methods of forecasting. Okay. Uh, Aisha, as we mentioned, uh, there, there are six or seven quantitative methods and we started with naive approach. Naive approach is, I think, the simplest easiest, straightforward method of forecasting, which assumes demand in the next period is same as demand in most recent period. Let's say uh, the demand in January, uh, we'll, we'll expect demand in February to be the same as demand in January, or demand in 2010, will, uh, if we are taking a year as a time horizon, uh, whatever was the de demand in 2009, we'll assume that there will be a same demand in 2010. If January sales were 68, then February sales will be 68. If 2009 sales were 1,000, 2010 sales will be 1,000. Sometimes cost effective and efficient can be a good starting point. I think you cannot say that it, uh, it means this approach gives you a good starting point. Uh, let's say uh, when we say last month such and such demand was there and we expect to be demand the same. It is a possibility that demand is more, it is a possibility that demand is less, but at least naive approach gives one good starting point uh, uh, as far as forecasting is concerned. Uh, generally, people tend to give a good weightage to the, uh, to the understanding that whatever was demand last month, similar demand is expected during the next month. The next approach is the moving average method. In moving average, uh, what we do is a series of arithmetic means. What we do is used if little or no trend, and used often for smoothing, provides overall impression of the data over a period of time. How we calculate moving average? I think it's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. We sum up the demand in the previous n period. n could be 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 12, 13, or whatever, and divide by n. We sum up the uh, demand of previous n periods divide by n and we get moving average. Uh, example of moving average, for example, we see here from January to July, we have the actual shed sale is 10, 12, 13, 16, 19, 23, 26. And if we calculate, let's say, the moving three months moving average, January, February, and March, we add 10, 12, 13, divide by three, and it is expected that in April the demand would be 11, 2, 2 by 3. This will be the demand in 
uh, March uh, in, in April and similarly in May, June and in July. This is what we call three period moving average and it's very simple. Now a uh, graph for the moving average as we see here this is the actual sales and this is the moving average forecast and uh, it's it's uh, very important to see here that average you 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 have to remember it averages are averages and averages will generally lag behind the actuals you see here the actual sale and when it crosses then in moving average you are few steps behind actually it gives good estimate but it is never perfect and there are some techniques uh, which generally people use to close the gap between actual and forecasts for example weighted moving average in weighting moving average what we do is we give we assign weights to the number of periods the most recent period is assigned the highest weight whereas the, uh, uh, the, the most past uh, periods are assigned less weights, uh, which is again used when trend is present. Older data usually is considered as less important. Weights are based on experience and intuition. Now, it is a quantitative method, but assigning the weight is uh, uh, to be done with the uh, expert opinion. Weighted moving average is summation of weights for period N multiplied de by demand for period n and then we sum up all the uh, n periods sum up the weights and uh, divide it by that let's see the calculation for example weight applied last month three two months ago two and three months ago one sum of the weights is six now actual data is as usual in the previous example we see 10 12 13 16 19 23 26 now if we apply the weighted what we call this weighted moving average in weighted moving average we apply 3 into 13 then 2 into 12 10 into 1 divide by 6 12 1 over 6 this is the three period weighted moving average and this is how we calculate it and in the graph you will see that, that is relatively closer than the simple moving average this is our actual sales and this is our average weighted moving uh, average and this is this is simple moving average and this is weighted moving average you see the weighted moving average is relatively closer to the actual sales now it means if you apply further if you increase the weight further let's say to, to month three the, the most recent month instead of three you apply the weight five and then weight two to the second month and weight one to the third month you will get further closer uh, uh, the gap between the actual sales and the weighted moving average i think it's uh, it's it, it's iteration and with the experience in whatever you are product uh, what, whatever you are predicting you will be able to come up with what weights actually needs to be assigned in order to have a closer forecast uh, which is uh, which matches generally uh, actual sales so in this graph uh, we see that the forecast is continuous uh, consistently lagging behind the actual and then consistently more than the actual why is this so aisha it is because you know averages are averages we are trying to see what happened during the last three uh, uh, let's say periods and then uh, summing up dividing by uh, the n and we get the average and averages uh, means this is a simple mathematical principle uh, uh, you have to reveal back to uh, go back to the data for example here you see there is an increasing trend 10 12 13 16 19 23 26 when let's say these three it means this 13 is not going to be uh, your, your moving average or weighted moving average is going to be definitely less than 13 because it is going to compensate for this 10 and 12 because you are divide, dividing it by 3. As such, your averages or weighted moving averages will be generally and similarly while you are here, right? And once your graph goes down, then uh, uh, you will see 26 is going to compensate for 19 and 23 
right? Averages will remain averages, and uh, generally they will be lagging your actual, mm -hmm. either higher or lower, as far as uh, moving averages are concerned. Then, uh, this is basically uh, the problem with the moving average, as you mentioned uh, earlier very well. Increasing n smooths the forecast, but makes it less sensitive to the changes, right? As you increase the n, your, it will be less sensitive to the changes. If you uh, decrease n, you will be closer. Let's say if it is two period moving average, it will be closer. If you, uh, similarly, by applying weight, more weight to the most recent will give you more closer forecast. Then do not forecast trend well, generally, because it's average. Requires extensive historical data. Okay? So now, is there some method uh, that will reduce, address these problems in forecasting? Yes, Aisha. Uh, while now we are discussing the exponential smoothing, uh, for example, exponential smoothing helps us uh, decreasing the variation. It means uh, the, the moving average were averages. Exponential smoothing gives a relatively better forecast. Uh, this is a form of weighted moving average. Weights decline exponentially. I'm, I'm sure you understand uh, what, what does it mean. Weights decline exponentially. Most re recent data is weighted the most, and it requires a smoothing constant. We'll see how, uh, the, how the moving constant is established. Uh, it ranges from 0 to 1, subjectly chosen based on experience, and it involves little record keeping of the past data. And we'll see, uh, uh, now we'll see how exponential smoothing actually works. This is the formula for uh, calculating the exponential smoothing. The new forecast is equal to last period's forecast plus alpha, what we call smoothing constant, bracket, last period's actual demand minus last period forecast. Mathematically, it is shown here. Ft is new forecast. Ft minus 1 is a previous forecast. Alpha is smoothing constant or weighing, weighting constant which is 0 less or equal to alpha is less or equal to 1. Means your alpha is between 0 and 1. Now, we apply this formula to some data. We see here, let's say predicted demand is 142 Ford Mustang. I'm sure everybody is familiar with what Ford Mustang is. It's a car, a sports car uh, by Ford. Actual demand was 153. And this smoothing cost and chosen alpha was 0.2. Okay. Now, using this data, we calculated the new forecast, 142 plus 0 0.2, 153 minus 142. This is the uh, according to the formula, uh, and we come up with the new forecast is 144 cars. Okay. Right. Sir, it seems that different values of alpha yield a different forecasts. They will. I mean, they should. Uh, then what do we need to consider to uh, choose this value of alpha? Well, no. It is, again, choosing the alpha is a, a very uh, a, a systematic method, and you need to be very careful in choosing the value of alpha. We'll see how we choose alpha. OK. This, basically, let, let, let's look at this table. This table shows us effects of smoothing constant. Let's say alpha is 0.1, and the most re recent period, alpha applied alpha is 0.1. The, how, how actually weights are assigned as far as alpha is concerned. Then second most recent period, alpha will be 1 into one, uh, alpha bracket 1 minus alpha is 0 0.09, 0 0.081, 0 0.073, 0 0.066. And if we use a smoothing constant alpha is equal to 0.5, then most recent, for mo most recent it will be 0.5, for the second most it will be 0.25, and so on, right? Now, now let's look at the impact of different alphas. This is lecture actual demand, right? And this is when your alpha is 0.5, and this is when your alpha is 0.1. You see the difference here? In the, the smaller, for smaller values of the alpha, it is a sort of, uh, it means trend is not being predicted, it is just uh, giving you a direction. Whereas the 0.5 value of alpha uh, runs generally closer to and tries to match the, the, actual the, 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 the actual demand. 
as such, while you are uh, on historical data, while you are trying to choose alpha and uh, try to, uh, you, you have to make some iterations to come up with what should be the value of alpha what, which you, you are using. Choose high value of alpha when underlying average is likely to change. That is the principle. Right. When the underlying average is likely to change, use high value of alpha. Choose low value of alpha when underlying average is stable. These are two principles. And again, the objective is to obtain the most accurate forecast, no matter what the technique is. We generally do this by selecting the model that gives us the lowest forecast error. Okay? And what is actually forecast error? That is the actual demand minus forecasted value. Right. Means closeness, the, 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 uh, the, the forecast error, the smaller, the better means difference between the actual and the forecast. As such, you need to choose alpha, which gives us the uh, least error uh, in the forecast. Sir, no matter how carefully we choose the alpha, forecast is never going to be equal to the actual demand. How do we know which value of alpha is going to yield the accurate forecast? I think, Aisha, this is a very, very good question. Yes, you are right. No matter how carefully we choose alpha, uh, the, the forecast and actuals are never going to be the same. Okay. But now the point is how to choose alpha which gives us the least error. We have basically three methods. One is a mean absolute deviation, then mean square error, and then uh, percentage uh, mean square error. Mapping. Mean absolute percentage error. First, mean absolute deviation, then mean square error, and then mean uh, then there is the one which is mean absolute person error mapping and we have uh, you see uh, this is the formula for mean absolute deviation which is summation of actual minus forecast divided by n mean square error is summation of the forecast errors squared divided by n and then mean absolute percent error mapping for which the formula is summation of 100 actual minus forecast over actual divided by n, where i is 1 to n, right? Mappe. Now, we'll be actually calculating comparison of the forecast errors. We see, let's say we have the data. And this data is for quarter 1 to quarter 8, actual tonnage unloaded. OK, ladies and gentlemen, the, the example which we are presenting here uh, are available. The actual detailed example, solve examples are available in Heiser book. Uh, I'll strongly urge you to refer to, for the complete solve example, to Heiser book as well. We'll be only using select examples here. But there are a lot more examples solved available in Heiser and other books. I'll strongly urge you to refer to these books. But this example comes from Heiser's book. Now, rounded forecast with alpha is 0.1. This is how we came up. Then absolute deviation for alpha 0.1, we calculated 5, 7.5, and so on. Then rounded forecast with alpha point. Now, Aisha, you'll recall, we want to see which method or which value of alpha yield us the least forecast error. Right? right? We want to decrease the forecast error. Now we are comparing MAD, MAPE, and mean percent error, or mean square error. We are trying to compare, compare these three methods. This is a rounded forecast with alpha 0.1, absolute deviation for alpha 0.1, a rounded forecast with alpha 0.5, and absolute deviation for alpha 0.5. Now, this is how we calculated MAD, mean absolute deviation, for alpha 0.1 and for alpha 0.5. It is 10.31, it is 12.33, okay? Now, we calculate mean square error using the formula for alpha 0.1, our uh, mean square error is 190.82, for alpha 0.5, our mean square error is 195.24, okay? Now, we calculate mapping, mean absolute percent error for alpha 0.1, it is 5.59 for alpha 0.5 it is 
676. Now, now you see consistently mean absolute deviation is less for alpha 0.1 than for alpha 0.5. Similarly, mean square error is 190.82, which is again less than for alpha 0.5. Then MAPE is also 5.59, which is again less than 6.76. It means our absolute deviation for alpha 0.1, all our four, three tests are uh, suggest that we should be using alpha 0.1. Thank you, sir, uh, for advancing our understanding on forecasting concepts. Ladies and gentlemen, in this session, we learned quantitative methods of forecasting, time series forecasting, decomposition of a time series, naive approach, moving averages, exponential smoothing. Well, viewers, this is it for now. See you next time with a new topic. Till then, thank you and Allah Hafiz.